Hey there, let's take a look at Bacon, and this is essentially a functional reactive programming library. Let's install Bacon into our project with npm install bacon.js. After that, I'm using a node environment, and I am going to say const bacon is equal to require bacon.js. We're going to start off by considering how we may start a timer or an interval inside of JavaScript. So if we had a timer, we might do something like set interval. We'd have an anonymous function. And for that function, we might say console.log, hello world. And we can do that every one second. So then if we run our project and we said node index.js, we would see hello world every second. The same could be done if we wanted to, for example, make a new date. We could console.log that and we would get the current date every second. Let's do this with bacon. And bacon allows us to do something called dot interval. This essentially allows us to have an observable that repeats every interval number. So we'll use a thousand milliseconds. And then we will use map. So we will take this interval and we'll map this to a new date. And then in order to get the value of the observable, so in order to subscribe to the observable, we need to hack into the on value method. That gives us our date in which we can console.log the date. Or alternatively, we can just simply add console.log and the parameter will be passed to our log function. I'm going to comment out our initial set interval. And if we run node index.js once again, you can see that we get the date every second. If we wanted to, for example, only take a certain amount of items from this bacon interval, we'd use the take operator. We could also use take until but if we said take and then we said 10, we could run our project once again. And what we would find is that we get the date logged out to the console every one second until we have 10 iterations. After the 10 iterations, it will complete. As you can see, we no longer have that date being logged out to the console. We could do a similar thing with sequentially. So let's comment out our interval for now. And we'll move this down and we will say sequentially. We can then say bacon dot sequentially. And what this does is it allows us to define an interval. So we will say, for example, 500 milliseconds. And then we can pass in an array of values. So let's add a random set of numbers to our array. And if we hook into our onValue method once again, and we log this out to the console, you can see that we get the sequential amount of results. So first we get five, then 99, then 35, and so on. So an awesome thing about using sequentially is that we can add all of these numbers. We can use dot .scan and what scan does is it allows us to accumulate each number each time we have an observable value. We can start our seed at zero. And then our accumulator function will simply take A and B and return A plus B. Let's log this out to the console. As you can see, we started off with zero, then we ended with five. 104, 139, and so on. So scan is really good when you want to deal with sequential values that we add up over a period of time. If you want to add the previous value, so you want to create an accumulator from either your sequential observable or your interval, then scan is a really good function. We can also look at things like bacon dot combine with. And this allows us to define a function that returns us a given value. For example, if we had A and B once again, 
and we wanted our function to simply return us the a plus b, we could then add the values of 10 and 20. And when we subscribe to this with on value, we should get 30. As you can see, we do get 30 there, but we could change this now to instead of being a plus, we can make that a multiple. And now we get 200. So this allows us to combine a set and of course define the function that is used to, to combine the items. We can also create observables from events. For example, if I had a bacon and I use the dot from event, I could pass through an event target. This could be things like a HTML element. So if we, for example, had a reference and that was equal to something like a document.query selector. And we passed in a potential ID such as profile image. Now it's not going to work because the document doesn't exist here on my environment, but we could pass it in as a reference. And maybe we want to listen to the click event on that event. We could then capture the on value and do whatever you want. I'm going to console.log that out. And we'd have access to that event as an observable stream. So Bacon is really powerful when you want to use functional reactive programming. And of course, it goes much deeper than this. This is a slight overview to get you started with Bacon. And of course, using a lot of the operators. I'd love to know what you think in the comments section below about Bacon. Do you think it compares to RxJS? Are you going to use this inside of your projects? And of course, don't forget to check out paulhalliday.io. We have lots of courses there. We have now free content with Ionic and Firebase. And until next time, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon.